Today we're going to go over an application called Delve. So there's a few different things that you can do with this application. You may be receiving an email from Microsoft that goes over your analytics for the week or your day even. And so that is all powered by Delve. Delve is an underutilized application within Microsoft 365 that has a lot of power to it and can help organize your day, your week, and free up more time within your calendar. Delve has something called My Analytics that I think you should pay pretty close attention to if you're worried about your bandwidth, if you're worried about your calendar, and you want to look for ways to be able to free yourself up and get more done in your day. So let's dive into Delve. So here we are within your Delve application within your Microsoft 365. The first thing you're going to see is popular documents. These documents are documents that are happening within your organization that you do have access to. That's an important key to this. You are only going to be able to see documents that you would have access to or that are shared within groups that you're a part of. I'm going to run down the left side here. This is the home. If you click on me, this is going to bring up documents that are specific to you. It's going to look at people that you collaborate with and it's going to look into your profile where you'll be able to update it, put information about your bio, your phone number, contact information, your likes and dislikes, etc. You're also going to see those documents with the that we saw on the homepage that are from people around you. So this will help you organize some of the, your working documents, who you're collaborating with, uh, people closest to you, maybe the people that you're pinging, uh, th that and that can be extremely helpful. Now, where I want to spend a lot of the time in is my analytics. Within my analytics, there are a few different things that I use on a daily basis and weekly basis to help me plan around my week and help my my focus and free up my calendar. So you will see focus, which is this first section. This is taking your calendar of events, the whatever you had during a week, and it shows you kind of like where your free time is, which is gives you time to focus. So if we hover over this little question mark, uh, it's going to give you a little bit more information on focus and how it works. And again, this is your time available to focus. It, it's an estimated portion over the past four weeks. And again, takes a look at your calendar, right? This will allow you to take time to block out on your calendar where nobody will be able to join a meeting and it really just uh, gives you that amount of time where you can uh, focus, <laughs> really just have nothing to do, no meetings, nobody can book you. And so if you want to do that, you can do make more time to focus and it's going to provide you different times that you might be able to block off for you. So we're going to go ahead and click get started here. And now it's going to say, how much time would you like to focus? Would you like to schedule two hours every day? Which seems like a lot of time for some of us, but hey, who, who wouldn't want two hours of focus time where we wouldn't have to be running back and forth in between meetings? So we're going to choose two hours, which is recommended. We're going to hit next. It's going to ask you, when would you like to do this? Morning or afternoon? I'm going to do afternoon. Then you can mute notifications or allow notifications. If you mute notifications, it's going to kind of use like a do not disturb type functionality. So we'll use that. And now it's going to uh, talk about plan configurations and plan settings, which we'll be able to edit those settings here if we want. But this is the focus time booked. And you'll see this week we have booked Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, well, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then next week we have all days, Monday through Friday. It doesn't look like any of the days need review. And so now on our calendar, we should be able to see that two hours are booked. We're gonna go into plan configuration, and now we're gonna look at our working hours. So this is where you can set exactly what our afternoons look at, look like. Um, whether your working hours, maybe you start earlier, some people do have different working hours, maybe you're starting your day at six. Well, you can set that here and you would be able to choose whenever it is that you actually start your day and then you can save your changes and it'll update your focus plan 
that you're creating. And then you could change, you, maybe maybe two hours is just too much and you're missing too much. Maybe you wanna drop it down, you can go to one or you can increase it to four. You can also change to say, you know what, maybe focus will be better done in the morning. You can change that then. And, uh, and then you could also silence your team's notifications during the focus time. Maybe you do want the notifications on, then you would turn silence off. So you would say, no, do not silence these notifications, but we're gonna go back to the home. So that is focus. Well-being are quiet days. Now I'm in a demo environment, so this data is a little bit uh, different, but well-being is the, the days of which you ha don't have interruptions of meetings and emails and chats outside of your working hours set in Outlook. Now, I do have, this does happen to me a lot where I'll have a meeting that's after hours if I'm doing, you know, maybe somebody is on Pacific time and they want to meet outside of Eastern time zones. So this does happen, but you can explore your daily breakdown here, which will show you, uh, you know, your streak of quiet days, uh, how many average quiet days a week. If you're working on weekends, this will show you. So this will just show your overall well-being and how you are scheduling your meetings and you can configure this or weekends, configure your weekends to allow for uh, a, a greater sense of well-being that'll you know try to advise you on how to best you know configure your working days and again it brings us back to that plan of setting for well-being another thing that i like to work with is your network and so this will show you your top collaborators who you're working with how you're working with them and uh, who who are uh, suggested important people for you. So you could say Adele's important and it'll bring it up. So we have Bart Simpson and it'll tell you exactly how long you've been collaborating with them. So we'll say Ashley is another one we pick on. Uh, so here it says that our total time is uh, four hours and 30 minutes, four hours and 35 minutes, five hours and five minutes. So it shows you who you're working with and how you're working with them, uh, which I think is, is pretty cool. You can also do with external members as well new members, and then of course your important members. So you can filter out this mapped view of whom you're working with, which I enjoy this. I think it's cool. It shows you who, who and how long you guys are uh, collaborating together. And then the final piece of here is collaboration. So this will show you the percentage of time in the last four weeks. Again, these are all four week or monthly measurables uh, during your working hours that you are using for collaboration. That's emails, chats and calls, meetings, right? Actively working together with individuals. And so it says right here, out of 25 meetings you organize or attended in the last four weeks, here are some common types. And so high attendance, invitations sent, no overlap. It looks like there were some overlap. No meetings or chats during the meeting. Uh, added Skype or Teams link in all meetings. So you just some cool things that you can kind of dive into, structure your day. It does give you collaboration tips. So the, apparently the the two tips that I have here are politely saying no to meetings you don't need to attend will inspire your teammates to also be more selective and careful about meeting planning. Probably because I had some meeting overlap, you know, and it, it, uh, again, this is a demo environment, but that's a that's a useful tip, so I'll, I'll thumb that up. Here's another one. Last minute invitations are sometimes necessary, but your meetings may be more effective if you give attendees enough time to prepare. That's probably because, again, this is a demo environment and I've been creating a whole bunch of meetings that were, uh, they were right either about to start or had already started. So, uh, you know, but again, it's just gonna give you tips, seeing how you can uh, help better your environment, how you can better uh, your focus, your well-being, your network, and collaboration. I really like my analytics. I think it's a great tool. I think it's a good part of Delve, and uh, it's something that you guys should take a look at. So if you guys got anything out of this video, please uh, like, subscribe, hit us in the comments if there is something else you want to be shared. If you knew about Delve and you used it, drop some tips down below. Maybe we'll get some people talking about how they are using this application inside the Microsoft 365 environment as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, See you.